Hi folks, this is Ali Nassan and I wanted to share with you some of my experiences with the newly released ControlFlex file by Brassler USA. Now this is a very unique file with specific characteristics that you need to understand before you can use it. So let's get into it. Before we uh, get into the specific uses of this file, I just wanted to kind of share a little bit of history with you so you can understand the metallurgy involved here in order to um, uh, understand the way this file behaves. Now, historically, the first nitile files that became available on the market were all austenitic. Now, austenitic files, uh, austenite and martensite, are two specific phases of the nickel titanium metal. So, nickel titanium is an alloy, and austenite and martensite are two crystalline structures of the same metal. Now what happens is a little bit of heat treatment can change the, uh, the, uh, the this crystalline structure and interestingly enough based on whatever crystalline structure these files have they have different characteristics. So what I'm trying to say is that austenitic files for example they have greater cutting efficiency. They have edge fidelity which means that the, um, the, that the edge is very sharp and stays sharp. It doesn't roll over because the metal is pretty hard uh, although it's super elastic it still ha it has very uh, has a lot of torque resistance, and what that means is that the file doesn't quite unwind. If an austenitic file unwinds, you got to throw it out right away because it means that file has really reached its uh, capacity for torque. Now. On the other hand, austenitic files have low cyclic fatigue resistance, so a lot of bending back and forth can create fatigue and they can break as a result of that. So they're a little bit less flexible because of that. On the other hand, martensitic files, which is the other kind of a, uh, phase uh, transition of the specific nitai metal alloy, have a high cyclic fatigue resistance and therefore they're very flexible. So these files are actually fairly malleable, which means that you can almost pre-curve your nitai file, which is a really great uh, niche use in specific cases. At the same time, however, because of what you gain in terms of this flexibility, you end up losing something, and that is your torque resistance. So your nitile files that are martensitic are going to unwind very um, uh, quite readily and much easier than your austenitic files. So as a result of this, some manufacturers have tried to play around with this metallurgy to produce files with a mix of austenitic Austenitic and, and, and martensitic characteristics. And these files were originally theorized that they would be the best of both worlds. Uh, unfortunately, we all know that there's no such thing as the best of both worlds, and you can only be mediocre in each world as a result of that. So uh, before we talk about these uh, types of files, let's take a quick look at this thing that I call a phase transition spectrum diagram. And what that is, is if you look from the left to the right, you have austenitic file, uh, which are a little bit uh, cooler side of, um, of, of this transition uh, for the metal. And then when you heat treat these metals, the same nickel titanium alloy, it achieves a martensitic deformation and a martensitic crystalline structure. The difference, as I mentioned before, is on the left side, you austenitic files that were the original files that came on the market uh, uh, those were you know uh, super elastic but they were hard they returned back to their shape uh, but then they were at the same time they were torque resistant and they had very efficient cutting capability sharp edges on the right side of the spectrum, your martin setting files, you could pre-bend them because they were flexible and ductile. At the same time, uh, they were uh, very cyclic fatigue resistant, but uh, had very low uh, torque resistance. So if you look at the list here, your original files on the left side, your um, endo sequence, ESX, control flex, pro taper, vortex, all in profile, GT files, all those files that originally came out back in the 90s, and then also uh, in the 2000s were all austenitic files and they were really nice and sharp and they had a good uh, torque resistance. But then somehow along the way, some manufacturers decided to kind of play around with the metallurgy to heat up the uh, metal a little bit and get some kind of in between. And those became known as the first one was your vortex blue file and then later on your edge file and then also all the gold uh, series in the Tulsa, Tulsa Densply uh, files. And those had, were trying to have a little bit of martensitic kind of components to them as well. 
Well, this file, the ControlFlex by Brassler, is really quite a, a Martin Aesthetic file. So it's the ControlFlex Martin Aesthetic M, and this file can actually quite easily be pre-bent, and it's very, very flexible, super flexible, very resistant to cyclic fatigue. But the downside of that is that you will get a little bit unwinding a little bit uh, more readily. But it's okay because you can autoclave it, you put it back in the autoclave, and it rewinds back right away. And that is really an advantage in that sense. So you can get the super flexibility, you just have to understand that you will get a little bit unwinding and unwinding on this side of the spectrum isn't the bad news that it used to be on the left side of the spectrum. On the left side of the spectrum, as soon as you get unwinding, you have to throw that file out. On the right side, if you get unwinding, it's okay as long as you keep control and measure your working length and you keep make sure that it stays uh, the same and you keep remeasuring it on your ruler, uh, then the fact that the file unwinds is not a problem. So uh, there is something else that comes up as a result of this. So something that I have found to be very useful is that when you end up having this situation in which you have files that are completely austenitic and completely martensitic, instead of having this idea to come up with files that are in the middle of the spectrum, so there would be an average of austenitic and martensitic, which I, as I said, they hope to get the best of both worlds, but they may actually end up getting not quite the best of both worlds, but be mediocre at, at, at each world. Maybe if we hybridized a little bit, a couple of files from the left side of the spectrum and a couple of files from the right side of the spectrum in the same sequence for a given advanced case, that you could actually end up getting the best of both worlds by actually combining uh, each world into to one. So what am I trying to say in this before I confuse you anymore? Let's take a look at it. For example, I'm talking about maybe combining some endosequence and ESX files with the control flex M or control flex uh, Martin Sedek file. And, and this kind of a sequence will help you in the straighter portion of the canal to use the ESX and endo sequence, uh, which is more torque resistant and therefore it won't unwind. And then as you get to the apical uh, one third to one half of the root, you switch to the control flex Martin Sedek files. And now all of a sudden you have uh, removed and enlarged in a crown down fashion, the top part of the uh, root with a austenitic file. So very efficiently and quickly you remove the top. And then for the bottom one third where the curves and the dangerous anatomy is, now you're using a Martin Sedek file, which will have a, um, may have a little bit of a lesser efficient cutting, but has a lot more flexibility. So this way you actually are trying to achieve truly the best of both worlds by applying each file with its own specific characteristics in the bat and that part of the canal where it will excel. So austenitic files in the coronal two-thirds of the root, martensitic files in the apical one-third to one-half of the root. So uh, let's take another look at it. So if you also look at it in terms of basic advanced and super advanced or advanced squared cases as I call them um, that you run into, you will find out that most of the time austenitic files will certainly be adequate in using your basic, to take care of your basic cases and most of your advanced cases. But somewhere between advanced and advanced squared cases is where you're going to end up needing this kind of a hybridized sequence of both austenitic and martensitic files. And that's where this type of a combination comes handy. So Control Flex is fully martensitic uh, and therefore it has great flexibility and cyclic fatigue resistance uh, and it's indicator really in advanced and super advanced cases that require um, um, instrumentation around curvatures and very difficult type of anatomy. And during these cases, uh, the file will unwind, as I mentioned before, but it's okay because it will rewind once you autoclave um, the file. Heating the file will basically revert it back to its original shape. So it's a little bit of a magic trick, but it actually works. So a way to avoid uh, getting this type of a um, unwinding in these files is to use them in a single stroke and clean uh, technique, which is SSC, which I have described in the past, and you can visit us on our uh, website, everyworldendo.com, so you can get a little bit more information about the specific technique that utilizes the specific brush which your uh, assistant will put a little alcohol on and wipe your the flutes of your file clean and after each stroke. So it's a very efficient way of cleaning the debris out of your uh, file flutes and therefore uh, reducing the torque on your file. So this is a good way of reducing the torque on the file and reducing your unwinding. Now you that can also happen, you, could, you should do this SSC also with your arsenitic files, but it's specifically and far more important with your Martin Sedek files. 
So uh, let's uh, keep in mind then therefore that the three main uses of these Martin Sedic types uh, of files, including the Control Flex uh, M, is the advanced for advanced cases and super advanced cases with difficult anatomy. Also in difficult to access areas. When you have patients that can only open this wide, getting even a 21 millimeter file down into the back of the tooth to put it in the lower second molars mesial roots are pretty tough. So one of the beauty of these types of Martin Sedic files is that you can bend them so that they can actually have an easier access and, and you can work them around. The same way when you pre-curve your files, you're able to put them in the mesial root of your lower molars a lot easier because you can basically come in with an angle. And I will show you a little video that demonstrates that in a second. And the third main use is also uh, bypassing ledges. And in that, it's quite helpful because we all know that we can bypass ledges easily using hand files. However, in nighttime files in the past that have been austenitic, they stay straight. And it's very difficult to get around a ledge with a straight file that is fairly stiff as well. So being able to create a tiny little hook, a J-hook, at the end of these files is uh, certainly very helpful in uh, allowing us to bypass these uh, these ledgers. So take a look at, let's take a look at the uh, first case here, which is this lower molar that this patient has very difficult access and we have a tough time getting in. And here's the Control Flex orifice opener. As you can see, I'm putting, just with a little bit of an alcohol gauze, a good curve here on it. And that allows me to easily slide the file in by coming in at an angle. You can see here it's fairly curved and it allows me to be able to see actually just the tip of the file and put it into the orifice and go in there. And as you can see it straightens out after it rotates and it's because these files again are quite malleable and they get that kind of a uh, you know that just the rotation in the canal will straighten it out. Uh, you can see here too the same thing with your working files that was the orifice opener and by the way the orifice opener is really a great great file that you end up using pretty much in all your cases that are in the back where you have difficulty in, in accessing. You can see here that easily uh, just using the back of uh, the handle of my mirror I was able to pre-curve the size 35 control flex uh, file and then uh, put it into the canal again. Now it's important See, I'm just pre-curving it again, look at that, and that allows very easy insertion of the file into the canal. That's important to know that you need to, uh, unlike the other files that it was rotating when you go into the canal and out of the canal, here with these files you have to stop the file after you uh, wipe it before you put it in the canal because otherwise it'll wobble because it's not going to be in a straight shape. Here I'm applying the BC sealer to the canal and once again I'm using a pre-curved um, control flex file just to push the sealer down here uh, again just demonstrating other uses with this ability to pre-curve your nighttime file that allows your master file to be pre-curved and push the sealer to coat the canal walls completely. And here I'm just using the BC cones with the uh, biceramic sealer using hydraulic condensation, using bonded obturation here to uh, then bond my gutta percha cone uh, with the help of BC sealer into the canal. And, uh, and that's basically in that, those ca that case is done. You can see we had a little bit of a sharp hook at the apex of the mesial roots that the files handled beautifully in this case went by very quickly and efficiently was completed with the control flex file using uh, a pre-curved type of a um, help to get access in this back area of the mouth. Now let's take another look for uh, bypassing ledges. As I mentioned bypassing ledges this, this tooth was previously started by the patient's dentist and there was a ledge that was created that they couldn't bypass and the patient was referred to me right here on the mesial buccal root, you can see there is a ledge present. This file is not fully seating when it's straight and it's going down because it's hitting that point of the ledge that has been created with an austenitic file in a curved root. So what I do is just you can take your uh, cotton pliers and create a nice little uh, hook, a J hook. And I'm, I put the J hook again, the file is not rotating when I put it in the canal. You keep it uh, uh, completely off and then you place the uh, tip of the file in the canal, you go down to the point of the ledge, then you quickly throttle in and it'll find the area of the ledge and it'll jump in. So the ledge is bypassed this way. At this point, now you wanna just go up and down in short amplitudes of one or two millimeters for a good five, six times uh, while it's rotating and it helps blend in a path into, um, into the canal again. 
and I'm doing that again. You can pre-curve in whatever direction is comfortable for you and then rotate the file until it, you find the proper path to get into that area of the ledge. So here the ledge is towards the, uh, uh, the mesial buckle and I'm able to do to basically um, pre-curve it in, in a way that's easier for me to pre-curve but then turn the handpiece on and uh, let it uh, rotate until it faces the direction that I want then put it in the canal. So I've actually cleaned this case all the way to the end and fit the cones and then place the biceramic sealer again the same way as before BC sealer I'm injecting directly in this case this is the advanced obturation technique remember that the advanced obturation technique is used for those who have a microscope and you can see what you're doing otherwise you would be um, uh, using the basic in which you just place the sealer on a paper pad and you can take your pre-curved master file here uh, and then just kind of coat it and then push it all the way down that would be a good way of coating the canal walls and then you coat your master cones and slowly seat them to full working length this way you can put additional cones when you have oval canals that uh, will fill up that space there's no need for lateral or vertical condensation just sear it off at the RFS level and about a millimeter above it so you can melt that gutta percha above the RFS and then use a number 10 plugger to push it all the way down and here's the final fill you can see that we bypassed that curvature there's four canals in here and the ledge was bypassed easily and the canal was filled all the way to the end so the control flex files come in a variety of sizes you have the orifice opener that I mentioned which is size 1907 this is a really nice uh, orifice opener to use in almost all your cases uh, again it will unwind on you a little bit but don't worry uh, it once you put it in the autoclave it will rewind again you can get multiple uses out of the orifice opener um, I probably use mine for five six times before I toss it uh, and uh, also the other files the uh, in, in the system the 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 main uh, files come in sizes 15 through 45 in the 04 taper and these files could be used again on their own with their own sequence so they could be hybridized in the um, uh, in, in the technique so so they could be hybridized with either end of sequence area sex in a sequence of sizes 40 through 35 followed by sizes 30 through 20 in a control flex in a crown down manner in a very advanced cases or you could use basically 40 or 35 control flex a which is the austenetic uh, version of control flex or and then 30 through 20 in control flex m which is the martensetic version and now you end up you end up having sizes 40 through 20 in a hybridized version of austenetic in the straight portion of the canal and martensetic in the in the apical portion of the canal where you need to have that kind of curvature management so um, you are using them in a, in a crown down fashion from the largest to the smallest. So the 40 and the 35 prepare the top part of the canal. By the time you reach the middle part of the canal, then you just switch to the M version with the 30 through 20. So let's talk about some of the basic type of cases you run into in a clinical practice. Your basic advanced and the advanced square type of cases that include this type of anatomy. As you can see in the lower, on a basic case is a case where you have a single canal and it's a fairly straightforward type of a, a straight case. On advanced cases are cases, for example, molars where you have at least one of the canals are kind of thin and narrow and maybe a little bit curved. And of course, advanced squared cases are cases where you have severe curvatures and calcifications and those those kinds of cases are more difficult to handle. Now, uh, in the past, all manufacturers have been giving you is one universal sequence that they recommend to use with all cases. But we all know that everyone's practice composition is different. So you all have different types of cases you run into. It's just, it doesn't make any sense to use the same sequence on every case, because in some cases you're gonna end up using way too many files. And in some other cases, you're not gonna use enough files. When you have a universal, that's kind of like trying to be the best of both worlds this is what ends up happening is that you're not going to be good at any one individual case a specialist our job is to customize treatment for the individual case you're dealing with and this is where this kind of uh, triaging of your cases is very important and helpful in terms of deciding what is the right um, uh, sequence for a given um, case that you're dealing with so for example, I'm just going to write it down here. You always need to have some hand filing. That size is small sizes of 8, 10, and 15 hand file are still necessary. That's just the safest way of doing your instrumentation to have some hand filing, helping stainless steel create some kind of path, and then having your night eyes finish it up. 
in basic cases as what I have described in the ESX protocol, it's very easy. You really end up needing, for the most part, only two files, an expediter and a, uh, uh, a final file to finish uh, that case. For advanced cases, you always need to have an orifice opener and then there's a couple of scout files that you're going to end up using and uh, then you will get to a finishing file that would be your final finishing file. Uh, of course, I'm not going to bother with explaining the basic and the advanced in this, uh, in this issue because I don't want to confuse people. There's ample videos and explanations on our website for the basic and the advanced uh, protocol so i would recommend that you go on to our website and take a look at that and then for the uh, advanced squared however as i mentioned you can use a 40 35 and then 30 through 20 or you could use this other uh, sequence that i recommend which is using an orifice opener you always need a little bit of an orifice opener at the beginning it always helps reduce the load on the actual files you're going to use inside the canal so an orifice opener and then use a scout file which i uh, i'm using the um uh, the esx scout which is a 1504 and then followed by sizes 35 um you know, 04 ESX, or it could be any other a constant taper file, and then 30 through 20, 30, uh, 30 through uh, 20 in the 04 constant taper, also with the Martin Static Control Flex file. So here we're hybridizing uh, the first, I mean, besides the orifice opener, the first couple of files, uh, the, um, um, the first couple of files are austenetic, and then the last three files are Martin Static. And this combination allows you to kind of get uh, these cases done in a very predictable manner. And you can see here that that's basically uh, completed using these protocols that I mentioned. So uh, this is basically the, the, the bottom line here. Once again, I'm just showing the, 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 the specific sequence that I'm using for the basic advanced and advanced squared type of cases uh, that requires hybridization a little bit on the advanced squared side. So to sum things up, ControlFlex has a place in your repertoire of files. It's a Martin Setic file that can be successfully hybridized with the Austenetic files in order to address some of the tougher or the super tough cases that you run into. Of course, they can also be used in a sequence on their own in a crown down fashion, uh, but expect them to unwind a little bit when you're doing that uh, at a higher rate than your Austenetic files. But again, as I mentioned before, that's okay because they will rewind back after you um, um, after you autoclave them and the unwinding on the Martin Setic side of the spectrum isn't as scary and as dangerous as unwinding is on the austenetic side of files. So um, that's not really a concern, the fact that they unwind. I, when I, uh, if I were to use them on a full sequence of uh, control flex, the files will unwind on me, but I just basically ignore it. I just make sure I have the right lengths and I make the measurements and I will uh, proceed to, to do the case. Of course, using SSC will help reduce the rate of un unwinding, that single stroke and clean technique. So please our website at rebuildinthe.com where we're gonna have more uh, tutorials and videos in this particular area. And um, um, any questions that you have, you can ask us in the Ask the Faculty Questions section of our website as well. For Rebuild in there, I'm Ali Nese and I hope you found this information helpful.